Welcome class to the week four presentation for ME 105 Medical Terminology. This week we have two chapters to focus on. The first chapter is chapter 13 and we will go over the nervous system and psychologic disorders within that chapter. Chapter 14 focuses on special sense organs of the peripheral nervous system. Please remember my presentation will not cover everything in those chapters, so it is still very important to read through those chapters on your own. Let's look at the structural organization. Our central nervous system can be broken down into two main systems. The central, I'm sorry, our nervous system can be broken down into two main systems, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So the central nervous system, also referred to as CNS, consists of the brain as well as the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system, often referred to as PNS, consists of all the other nerves which are located all over the body. There are several functions of our nervous system that are good to know. Our nervous system helps with sensory input, motor output, evaluation and integration, homeostasis, and mental activity. The peripheral nervous system can also be subdivided into the sensory and motor divisions. Moving forward to our brain. The brain can mainly be looked at in three portions. The cerebrum, which is the largest portion, consists of two halves or hemispheres. The cerebellum is the smaller portion of the brain that lies inferior to the cerebrum, and it coordinates skeletal muscle activity to maintain posture and balance. And the brainstem, this is an elongated portion of the brain that lies inferior to the cerebrum and anterior to the cerebellum. The brain stem is what connects the brain to the spinal cord. There are several lobes to our cerebrum, frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital. Some of the words in medical terminology come straight from later, le, uh, I'm sorry, straight from Latin or Greek. I was trying to say those two words together and it was not working. So some of the words come straight from Latin or Greek, just like we talked about way back in week one. Cerebrum means brain. Gyrus means circle. Those are the round elevations on the surface of the cerebral hemispheres. Pons is Latin for bridge and it's part of the brainstem. Sulcus means furrow or ditch, and this is actually a groove on the surface of the cerebral hemispheres. The sulcuses are what separate one gyrus from another. And thalamus means inner room, and this is a mass of gray matter that's under the ventricle in each cerebral hemisphere. There's one disorder I want you to be familiar with that your quiz focuses on. It's subdural hematoma. So on the slide here, and I apologize, it came out a little blurry. You can see the dura mater underneath the bone. It's kind of in a blue color. The subdural space is that yellow that we're seeing. And then we can see where the um, cerebral spinal fluid would flow and then the actual brain itself. So subdural means it's beneath the dura layer in the subdural space. Hematoma means a collection of blood. So this word actually means a collection of blood in the space just beneath the dura mater. Some other words to be familiar with. Hemaparesis. Hema means half. Paresis means weakness. So weakness in either the right or left half of the body. Hemaplegia. Hema, again, half. Plague is paralysis. IA means condition. So a condition of being paralyzed on either the left or right half of the body. There's another term, diplegia. This refers to paralysis affecting like parts on both sides of the body. Aphasia is the next condition I want you to be familiar with. Aphasia, if we break it apart, A, that means no, not, or without. Phasia is going to refer to um, speech. Aphasia is the absence or impairment of the ability to communicate through speech, writing, or signs. This usually results from a brain dysfunction.
a couple more to go through. Brady Kinesia. Brady is going to indicate a slowness or below. So here we have Brady Kinesia. That's an abnormal slowness of movement or sluggish of sluggishness of mental or physical processes. Coma. This is a state of consciousness from which the patient cannot be aroused. Moving into some mental health terminology. Psychology is the study, the scientific study of behavior, talking, reading, sleeping, interacting with others, and mental processes such as thinking, feeling, remembering, and dreaming. Psychiatry is the medical specialty concerned with the origin, diagnosis, prevention, and the treatment of mental, emotional, and behavioral disorders. Mental health is, as a broad term, defined as emotional, behavioral, and social well-being that enables an ability to cope with internal and external events. Phobias. It's important to remember that phobias differ from generalized anxiety and panic attacks in that a specific situation or object brings on a strong fear response. So here are some examples. Claustrophobia. This is a fear of being trapped in a confined space. Acrophobia is a fear of heights. Agoraphobia is a fear of crowded places. We also have obsessive compulsive disorder, often referred to as OCD listed on here. In obsessive compulsive disorder, patients have both obsessions and compulsions. The obsessions are reoccurrent thoughts, fears, doubts, images, or impulses. So the compulsions are reoccurrent irresistible actions, such as counting or checking. The disorder is characterized by those reoccurrent and persistent thoughts and feelings that cause distress, consume considerable time, and interfere with occupational, social, or interpersonal functioning. So this can be very debilitating. Looking next at our eye, because our special senses are contained in um, our readings this week, just some quick reminders about the structures of the eye in terms of terms that you may be hearing. The cornea, this is the dome-shaped protective membrane. The iris is the colored area of the eye. The iris color is determined by genes or genetics. The pupil is the black center of the iris that controls the amount of light entering the eye. The lens is what actually bends the light rays and focuses them to the retina. And the retina actually contains those rods and cones, which are receptors that receive an image for the brain to interpret. You've probably seen one of these before. It will come up in just a second. This eye chart. We've probably called it an eye chart before. It has a name. It's called a Snellen chart. It tests for sharpness of vision, so this tests for visual acuity. It uses both letters and numbers, or even symbols, arranged in decreasing size from top to bottom, as we see here. There are some conditions of the eye that I want you to be familiar with. Daltonism. That's a weakness in perceiving colors distinctively, often referred to as color blindness. And here on our picture, we can see a test for it. Um, patients would be given different cards with different images such as these. If you are red-green colorblind, you might not notice that there's a 45 in there. Um, if the person can't see that, then that's one indication. Hyperopia. So that means farsightedness. Another good one to remember. This instrument you may be familiar with if you've had an eye exam. Tonometer. So the term tonometry is a way to measure intraocular pressure or the pressure within our eye. And this tonometer, I think it just presses on the eye briefly. Sometimes they'll use a puff of air and that can check the um, intraocular pressure as well. Next, moving to our ear. 
All right, so some structures for you to be familiar with are located on here. Please remember we have an outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. There are actually three bones in our ear that you want to be familiar with, the malus, incus, and stapes. You can see here the semicircular canals and the cochlea. All good things to familiarize yourself with. The term auditory, that, pertain, that just pertains to the sense of hearing and the organs involved. And again, those bones of the inner ear that I want you to remember, the malus, incus, and stapes. Some other terms, audiologist, this is a medical specialty that um, specializes in diseases of the ear. Audiology is the study of the function and the diseases of the ear, and otoscope is the, the instrument used to examine a patient's ear, and often we'll see this at most any general practitioner or pediatrician when they're doing any kind of general exam, we'll use that to look in the ears. A condition to be familiar with. Myronitis. This is an inflammation of the tympanic membrane. Often manifests as an earache. It can also sometimes be called an ear infection. Um, that term itis should always indicate that there's some sort of inflammation going on. Some odds and ends, when we see that ending OSIS, that should always indicate some abnormal condition. Adenoid, um, that just refers back to adeno and it means gland, not something I would really be concerned with. Prosthesis, that's an artificial part used to remedy a defect or a loss in a limb or part of a limb. At this point, we are through the most important highlights, definitely, definitely read three of those chapters. If you have any questions, need further assistance, I'm always here to help you. Don't forget that. And do remember all the information presented was from your textbook. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great week.